Hello, denizens of the internet. Welcome to my year three owning a Hackintosh. Has it been worth it? Report. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm going to divide this video into five parts because that's the number of parts I have. Number one, day-to-day -day problems. None. Nada. Rien. No hardware issues. Nothing blew up. No hardware failures. It's been running great. Only restarts for system updates. Number two, upgrading issues. Well, a year ago, I was on Sierra and I refused to upgrade to High Sierra because it was the start of the Apple file system teething pains and I just wanted to avoid all that. Even though uh, there was a version of Final Cut Pro that you could only get the new features unless you updated to High Sierra. And then, of course, if I wanted to play Tomb Raider, then I would have had to have updated to High Sierra. But, you know, having a game wasn't very important, but I downloaded it off of Steam anyway, and then I waited. I upgraded to Mojave soon after it was released on a spare SSD, of course. This major update from Sierra to Mojave went without a hitch, except for the USB port assignments. All my USB 3 ports had stopped working. Now, both Max and Hackintosh owners have have always had to deal with Mac OS's 15 port limit of both high speed USB, which is USB 2, and super speed USB, which is USB 3. 3.1 uh, was not an issue and, and is not counted in the USB port limit count. The issue was that the usual DSDT patch that had come out with every single update, well, it wouldn't work anymore. It was time to adopt Rehab Man's manual port assignment trickery. You know, this was a long process, well, I mean, for me at least, learning how to use Apple's IO Registry Explorer, turning off banks of HS and SS USB ports, finding out which USB ports were actually in use on my motherboard, and then creating a permanent SSDT, which uh, made future updates way easier. I hope you got all of that. It certainly gave me a greater appreciation for how the Mac OS worked. However, this was a bugger of a process that I just could not make work on my i5 mini hack. And when I was about to give up in frustration, I found something called USB map command that was way easier to master to get my USB ports working. I will leave links to both below. Good luck. Number three, how is the hardware doing? Well, I'm using the same gear as last year and I'll leave a link to that video below if you want to know, you know, about that build. But am I getting itchy for new gear? <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight I am. I started off this Hackintosh building stuff with an i7-4790K and then upgraded to an i7-7700K when my son gave me his hand-me-down Gigabyte Z170 motherboard. Remember when hand-me-downs <laughs> went the other way? I mean, uh, it really wasn't that much faster than my incredible 4790, but it was a bigger number, which is all that counts. But damn it, a month later, Intel sprung the i7-8700K on me. That's a thousand bigger. But I wasn't going to upgrade because everything worked. I could edit 4K video. I decided to stick with my paltry four core eight thread computer. <laughs> I did try upgrading my RX 480 to an Asus Vega 64, but that was a disaster and I took it back. It turned out that the VBIOS was not compatible. The Sapphire Nitro Vega 64, I'm told will work, but it's expensive and rare as hen's teeth. Uh, I did buy an X-Rite monitor calibrator, which has been fantastic. Uh, this computer here has been calibrated to video and my computer upstairs to printing stills to my Canon Pro 100. Very different calibrations and I would recommend using a monitor calibrator for your specific needs, if you care. That's it for the big items. I'm finding Mojave the most stable Mac OS in a Hackintosh environment, like when, you know, for me at least. The only caveat is for people who have uh, NVIDIA graphics cards, and unfortunately Mojave will not let you run any of them. But I'm very happy with my RX 580. It's very inexpensive and it runs great. I do hope to find a Vega 64 this year though. <laughs> Some final small bits and pieces. Number four. People keep recommending Linux. Yes, this is a never ending comment. And my answer is always, if Final Cut Pro 10, Logic Motion, and my entire messages, Apple Watch, iPhone ecosystem would run on it, I would change, so shut up. And yes, I know I should try Mint, shut up. 
And finally, number five, people don't check the dates of when my videos are first published. In the second anniversary video, I claimed that Apple did not make a decent monitorless iMac and hence the motivation for building this setup here. Recently, people have been posting comments like, hey, yes, Apple has a monitorless iMac. It's called the new Mac Mini, you tool. Well, first of all, the 2014 era Mac Mini was barely adequate for drying your ass after using a bidet. Secondly, while the new Mac Mini is definitely impressive, it has a terrible iGPU, and an expensive eGPU is not an option, and the damn thing thermal throttles. So stop telling me the Mac Mini is a monitorless iMac with a discrete GPU, because it's not, but it is damn fast. So with all that housekeeping done, that's it for year three of owning a Hackintosh. If anything I've described scares you, then good! It's meant to scare you. Hackintoshing is not for the faint of heart. And another quick note to all of you idiots out there who pick up any used piece of <laughs> PC and start going on the forums asking, hey, is this 1998 BBC Acorn Hackintoshable? No, of course not. Do your goddamn research, you twits. There's this thing called Google that I recommend you try using. Quit wasting the time of the experts on the Hackintosh forums who are just trying to help. Thank you for watching, denizens of the internet, and stay tuned a year from now for my Hackintosh at year four. Has it been worth it? Just stay where you are, do not move out of your seat, and, and just stay there for one year. I'll, I'll be back, promise.